Uh, Lennon Parham just opened a uh, beer. Uh, <laughs> hi, everybody. Welcome back to... Day drinking. Uh, <laughs> always, well, always Coors Light with you during the day, Lennon. I do know that about you. I'm not a day drinker. Can't take the no girl out of the south. No, I think Unless some you're people... Alcoholic. I think some people are day drinkers. If I have a beer in the day, it's a Coors Light. Because it's got to be like water. I can't handle... I like, I mean, like, I like the idea of it, but I feel like I just end up always like being like, all right, well, I just have to take a nap now. But that was the case when yeah. I was like 19 or 20, like when you do that sort of thing. I always have to sleep if I day drink. Yeah. Yeah. Like in college, if people so went out tired. drinking after class or in the afternoon, I had to take a five hour nap <laughs> yeah. before I could go back out. I couldn't keep going. And it's also, I really don't like being even a little bit drunk and hot. Like if the sun's out, I was like, oh, this is awful. You know what I mean? Oh, well, that, there's a, a picnic or like a festival or something like being on a boat with a beer and that doesn't feel good to you. No. Oh, that's a good question. Well, like maybe like a party barge. If there's like the little party sun cover, barge. a party barge. Okay. Where do those happen? I don't know. There are a lot of All them. You guys don't know. I don't know what a that party barge is. I'm like with Lennon. Went okay. down. I remember I'm, that famous one recently that went down? No. No. The whole everybody on it passed away oh, oh god up. this is the second episode in a row that we're We've talking had a couple about boating boat disasters. tragedies yeah what, what is it? that i don't know enough details <laughs> rough rough <laughs> memory of what happened no i mean it was just a news story in, in the year in like a couple years ago it was a i think it was a party barge it goes out like a pontoon boat yeah like a pontoon thing. boat yeah and it just tipped over and they were just <sighs> everybody on like yeah. a lake or something yeah wow. yeah mm. now i don't know I don't know what, what, like, was it cold water? Like, why, why wasn't anyone able to swim to shore? <laughs> Were they very it, far I feel away? Like, I feel like it, uh, what seems like a short distance swimming is much longer than what people think it is. Like, you just yeah. look over there and yeah, you're like, I could true. swim across that. Right. And you can't. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you guys, this is talking about another podcast on uh -huh. a podcast. No, that's fine. But did you ever hear, did you ever hear. I'll fucking listen to that podcast. That's the, great. The story about, um. What was it? It was the Ira Glass podcast. You American know? Life? Yeah. They did a series of stories. Um, one was about violin, which is why I listened to it. And the second one, my daughter's learning violin. Mm -hmm. The second one was about um, a, a long distance swimmer who was swimming in the Pacific. And uh, she felt something underneath her, mm -hmm. like a large body. Mm -mm. And it was, it ended up being a baby whale that had gotten lost from its mother. Uh -huh. And she knew if she swam to shore, the baby whale would follow and be get breached. So she stayed swimming for hours mm -mm. in the Pacific. It was like 7 a.m. And she had a buddy on the pier that would always look out for her because at the time she was like 16 years old. And he was like keeping an eye out for her. And he was he would shout like, she's with you. She's she's under you or whatever the, the baby whale uh -huh. and then the coast guard got involved and it was just like it's an amazing amazing story you should listen wow i like that you brought that to a more positive place because this actually <laughs> makes me self-conscious about the, we recorded the episode that will air after this one last week and oh, i talk yeah. about a pretty righteously terrible boat tragedy and i yeah. feel like i didn't really warn anybody or yeah like you know what i mean when we talked about the south korean ferry mm -hmm. I, I i like a thinking back later i was like oh yeah really kind of did a deep dive on that and so i think this is actually really good okay that we're kind of soft lobbing boat tragedies in this one well another positive one from a podcast i listened to there was a whale somewhere off of san francisco area that got tangled up in like fishing nets and yeah. wires and a coast guard guy told his friend he's like we gotta and so they it was kind of deep down and so a scuba guy got pulled in to the whole rescue and he went down there and it took him a long time to cut all these wires the thing yeah. got tangled up in but this small whale was released and then it kept it went away killed a seal and brought it back to him and pushed it at him to give to the scuba like as a gift and then he, he's like i don't want it and then he would it would go swim away and get the thing again he's like come on man i, I appreciate what you, like it was like communicating oh my with him God. That's so, and then he's like i, I don't want whales. it and he tried to, they're so smart and I he was and it, he said for like 30 40 minutes it kept like here yeah. you go and it went and got another one yeah like, well, right, how about this, this really, one? Oh my this seems like it's not working out for the seals. You guys are painting this as a positive <laughs> story, but if I'm a seal listening to this, I'm fucking furious right now. Yeah. You guys have a lot of seal fans. We do. Yeah. 
Not uh, the singer either. I I <laughs> just did, yeah. well, well, some fans are probably not fans. as many. Not as many. <laughs> there was this was like a old school like back in the day when like the first internet video started going around. There was a news report about a whale that had beached in the uh, like I think in Oregon. Sure. Or, you I'm know, not Washington. Gonna... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were like, we don't know what to do. And it's just giant. And here. Uh, so blow it up. They've decided to yeah. blow it up. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So then what you then have is giant chunks of whale, whale dis- falling from the sky, destroying <sighs> cars. And then there is just rotten whale everywhere, everywhere. which then brings in seagulls, which brings in bird shit. It was just a nightmare of, of disgusting, like rancid One whale. One guy's bad decision. Yes. Yeah. We're obviously talking. Oh, uh, we're obviously talking about uh, season four, season episode four. five. <laughs> I'm episode Matt five Walsh. Convention. I played Mike McClintock. Uh, my name is Timothy Simons. I played Jonah Ryan. On and we are here show with beat. the lovely and talented <laughs> and always fun Lennon Parham. I play Karen Collins. Karen Collins. And uh, we, we are. Oh, we're gonna try out. We're gonna try out our new thing. We are a questionably accurate V Pre Watch podcast. Yes, I feel like that's that our byline. Or All right, so that's what we're gonna say. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's start out. Um, so I'll start. So I mean, I guess you, I was I was kind you of took set a huge pause. Specific, I was but I mean, I was trying out. to be thoughtful. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you just thoughtful right doesn't get listeners. Okay, cool. Silent thoughtful doesn't get listeners. All right. Uh, how did you stumble into our show? Like, how? What was your introduction? Like, oh, I might be doing beep. The first time was an audition for the part of Dana, which Jessica St. Clair, Clair got. <laughs> who you are, uh, who you are, longtime friends yes, with and collaborators it was, and with. And I would have been in between seasons of playing house, so you know we knew what we were like going out for or whatever. And I, I so I had an audition, and then she got it, and I was like, because I, you know, everyone loved Veep. Like at that point, we were all obsessed with it. Um, in the comedy community, I think mm-hmm. especially, and I mean, I even and remember. And the improv community, you probably knew that they were sure. friendly. Yeah. yeah, and I also because Allison Jones cast it; she's amazing. And I remember when they cast the pilot, and they like were having callbacks, and who, the people that I knew that were going in for callbacks, and who got cast, and how exciting that that all was. And then, and then uh, I guess the next season, I got called to read for this part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had an audition, and then I had a call back, and it was with Julia and Chris Addison, who's mm. an EP director. Um, and the it was totally different. The sides were it was about a, like whether or not they should declare a state of emergency in like a, a hurricane yeah. in Florida, which I think ended up happening earlier. Yeah. So the sides were completely different, but the game was the same. So she never says anything <laughs> definitive. And she's a total piece of work, and uh, she just, it's a nightmare. So I was supposed to improvise, because we did we did the script, tw- mm-hmm. like, twice, and had, had a blast. And then they were like, okay, do whatever you want. And I was like, I mean, for an improviser, like, specificity, detail is... Helpful. Everything. Yeah, it's yeah, how yeah, yeah. you're funny. It's how yeah. I'm funny, like, yeah, referencing yeah. some random, like, Juice Newton or something, you know. So to not be having what? Juice Newton, you know, for example, I, I knew what she meant. Like well, just who's having, Juice Newton? Like, she's a singer, <laughs> a real with, singer, playing yeah. with the Queen of Hearts. Where where did she go? Just as a quick like in the early eighties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Playing with the Queen of Hearts. Dun, 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 dun. No Joker one ain't really smart. smart. Dun, 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 dun. The, the Joker, Joker is the only fool. I have never do anything, anything but you. Yeah. It was top ten in like yeah. nineteen eighty one or eighty four or something. Yeah. Okay. I've never heard of this person before. I'm going to have to go check them out. It's okay. She's great. <laughs> to yeah, all of our were. Seal the Singer fans, <laughs> yeah. this is something for you. Maybe like a new artist. Seal and, and Juice. <laughs> check yeah. out Juice, everyone. <laughs> so so to, to have that, like it was like an Achilles heel, it felt like, to not be able to be specific. So I had to, so, but, but I just avoided at any cost like saying like giving a solid answer or i would say something and then repeat like say the exact opposite like with a weird amount of time in between that's it (laughs) that was it and it was literally like i walked out of there and i felt like i was on a high i thought was like the best audition i had ever had in my life and also i had the feeling that like if i didn't get it 
it couldn't have been because I didn't nail it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also that that experience would have been enough. Like that experience of improvising with Julia and getting notes from Chris and like nailing it in front of Allison, like that was so satisfying. <laughs> it oh, felt good. so good. So then to get the call that I got the part two on top of that was almost like after you get married and you get to go on a honeymoon, like mm -hmm. you're not focused at all on what the what's coming. <laughs> like, yeah. So that's that cool. Was, that's that what like, I say about the improv yeah. thing. I feel like the way we it's kind of funny. I was I had I love another stealing. motion to talk there and then watch just said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. That's but no, that's OK. Go Tim on. and I are in therapy uh, yeah. together. We're doing couples therapy. It's, I get it. We're I get trying, it. You know, longstanding collaborative yes, relationships yes. are like marriages. Totally. Um, no, I was just sharing that similar training, similar shows we always do together. Lenny and I have done together. Our sort of improv is about listening or having some source material, like a monologue, to sort of deconstruct with. So I get the terror now, what you mean, but like as an improviser, it's terrifying. Yeah. I also want to, I was also thinking about when you were telling the story, that it, it, it's also, I feel like maybe even a little bit more terrifying in the circumstances of like ha not having source material, but then also not being able to take a firm stance on something, not mm -hmm. being able to say like, oh no, I have a clear, I'm going to, I'm going to go off of this clearly formed right. opinion to have to, n it's really hard to not make a choice and not have an opinion and also make that interesting. Yeah. Or have to make a choice, but then have it have an option. Opposite. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to pre-think about the first part before yes. you say it so that then you can say the second part. Right. It kind of feels like right. you should have been paid twice for like, doing this show <laughs> because you had you were essentially playing two characters. Oh, it was so fun. It was the best. I, yeah. I, there was something in the audition I did where it was like, it, this. so I just said, I think I said something like, um, well, yeah, a nice cup of tea or... <laughs> A cup of coffee, you know, like, <laughs> just like, like just nonsense, just total nonsense. Like you, it's just choices. You could have this or this. I don't know. Anyway, um, were they? Do you remember if they were laughing, like Chris or Julia? Yeah, they were. They were into yeah, it. Yes, they were a, laughing. Yeah, that's and, fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that has been not to say that your experience was not unique, uh, especially yeah. to you, but it does seem like people have talked about that experience of being in a callback with Julia and being yeah. able to improvise with her and being yeah. like, I would have been fine with that. This other part, like that, is yeah. something we've heard from other people who oh, have good. had that experience as well. Great. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so I'm going to just so you, if you thought you were like interesting or telling a story we haven't heard it's no, not we've special heard it's not special it's not special <laughs> that's tim's i want to i can Good. before we just get... look at the stats you've already talked 54 percent of the time <laughs> oh you I'm have only the live, at 40 percent and metrics. she's at six percent i feel like she's we have to create more six. space we have to create more space for our guests i want to say this because you're here in front of us even yeah. though we're not it's not about this episode when you come back in later seasons yes like around Nev nevada around yeah. Like yeah. nevada yeah. stuff there is one of my favorite moments on the show <laughs> is when you get off the plane and wordlessly have an opinion on the weather, but it's both opinions on whether or not the weather is good or bad. You have an unreadable and and you are you are having an opinion, but even in looking at you, it's both of them. That's I love it. I love sweet. it. I love it. We shot that. You guys were shooting. That was like a second unit. Me and Addison went to a random, you know, like a a, a tarmac somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it was scripted because I had a line with with the um, the the flight attendant or or whoever was manning. It was like a private jet kind uh -huh. of. I'd been flown in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and and I hadn't done that character in. A couple in a while, so I get off the plane and I like look around and I say and I say the line to the stewardess and it was it was a joke the, the line but um, it wasn't working it didn't work for some reason it was mm -hmm. like it needed to be both things like you said mm -hmm. and so we I remember we repeated it we tried we tried it a bunch of different ways it took longer than I would have thought it would have taken mm -hmm. um, but we yeah we got it it was ultimately. really good and what ultimately we learn learn from this is that you don't need words or lines on a page, which is why Lenin is coming out in favor of the AMPTA. Uh, that's oh, wait a minute. WGA no, I don't, you're putting words in her I, 
I, but I'm looking right well, at the her. the AMTPA the, can do whatever they want, <laughs> whoever the fuck that is. <laughs> it's just a bunch of fucking letters. <laughs> but you're clear. I know the letters WGA, and you know those, and you're against yes, them. Yes, I'm against them by being in them at uh-huh. the same time. I, you, I'm a member of so many unions at this point. <laughs> Not to brag, um, but yeah, I'm for all of them. <laughs> the first time I ever saw Scabby the Rat was when oh, shit. Sure. There, was a, there was a small, that was me probably? That's me. You're really important. I'm very sorry. Oh, oh God, it, that's, wow, that's the head of the AMTPA <laughs> is texting me right now. Um, the, there, was a, there was a small union uh, machinist shop uh, just south of the Home Depot on North Avenue, like right before Elston. And I was in Chicago. 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 Yeah, so back in Chicago. And it was a really small place. But there were just like these two dudes out. They were on strike. Two fucking dudes and one 12-foot scabby the rat. Oh. And it was like the ones that they have now are bigger, but also a little gentler. This was like a fuck you scabby the rat. It yeah. was it's awesome. terrifying, it's right? Terrifying. It's like blood dripping down from yes. its sharp teeth. Oh, I was amazed. Red That's eyes. like a you could have a good business by renting out Scabby the Rats. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like being a we've DJ at weddings. We've tried to put Scabby the Rat in all of the, our features that we've written. Really? <laughs> yeah, we, Wait, I, really? love, I love Scabby the Rat. That's so random. Yeah, me and Jessica, you know, we're, like, she's Jersey strong, you yeah. know? Like, we're, it's John Bon Jovi and, and Scabby the Rat all day long. <laughs> uh, do, do, have you, like, gone deep on the history of Scabby the Rat? No, not at all. We just okay. think it's funny on the surface, and that's enough for us. But, okay. yeah, maybe I should Wikipedia it. It'd be quick. It, you, yeah, it'd be easy to do. All right, so I'm going to give you a little storyline here for the listeners who want to know what uh, episode we're doing. This is Walsh just finds these on the internet. Yeah, I didn't do any work. Yeah, yeah. Full disclosure. This is IMDb. This week we're getting it from IMDb. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Whilst the party is gearing up for the conventions. Whilst. That's not true, yeah. though. That they're at the convention currently happening. There's this is no why you got to read these beforehand. Just read them once Well, thank beforehand. you. Point out any inconsistencies, yeah, please. Yeah, well, I mean, I, IMDb. Have you seen my picture on IMDb? I mean, <laughs> it's a tough, and I've tried to change it. Here it is. So many times. Oh, my God. That's some crazy fun I hair. Hate. They really like the blow drop. I hate Look at that, that action. Oh, my God. Look at the Look action. At you. I hate that photo. What wow. a f- I mean, this is because you could see. Can in we my, use it like, for our episode? My dead assets? inside. Like I feel dead inside. Yeah. Do we have permission here. to use it for our episode? <laughs> Don't <assets>? you dare! <laughs> Don't you dare! All right, Aaron. Do not associate this one with uh, the episode. <laughs> that is funny, and you can't change it. I've tried. It's like it's like yeah. a gauntlet to try to change. Anyway, sorry I got you off your your IMDb page of where the plot summary of that no, specific that's okay. episode. She also I, I just as... want to say to the listeners, do not look up the picture. It would be rude to Lennon if you looked up the picture. My my Wikipedia page <laughs> picture is even worse. They're always so much worse on the Wikipedia Your page. Your picture is from a film, an independent film, is I think it? on IMDb. Yeah, you have on a you have a full insane mustache. It must have been <laughs> like a backwoods, you're playing a backwoods character or <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? I do, but I don't know if it was for a movie. I think I just liked it. <laughs> yeah, you look different there, too. Look at that. Look I'm, at that Wikipedia. That's my half eyes open. That was like a fan took that at like a visit. Yeah, you do of have cock eye. On. I mean, it's crazy. You are cock eyed there. That's I will not... say that somehow, even with all the technology we have, Wikipedia finds the worst pictures of you to to put up. I think that's on purpose. It's got to be. At one point in, I think, the second season, I saw that there was like a Wikipedia, somebody like linked to a wiki wiki about the show, and I clicked on my name. I was like, oh, fuck, look at that. I have one. And I click on it, and then it said, uh, this post has been removed because it was deemed uh, not relevantly, uh, not relevant, (laughs) like irrelevant, (laughs) basically. And that was your It was mine, yeah. They were like, we don't need this. Now, see, if you had gone on Comedy Bang Bang more, you would have a lot of people looking you up on Wikipedia. I was just trying to figure. And adding specifics. So this looks like a restaurant wall, right? Yeah. If you had to guess the menu of that restaurant, I would say they definitely have like wings, 
you know what I mean? It looks kind of like you're trying to be Bannigan's. <laughs> or Ruby what's the Tuesdays. Ni- yeah. It looks like, what's the nicer version of Bannigan's? I forget. They're, I used Bannigan's to like it. Is pretty, ground round? Pretty good. No, not ground round. Uh, I forget. Anyways. Anyways. Houston's? Yes. Houston's? Houston's was good. That's yeah. what this looks like. Like they're that trying to be this, Houston's. That was the neighborhood yes. cafe in the show Accidentally on Purpose. That's a set. Oh, it's a set. Well, they yeah. did a good job. Yeah. They did a good job. Really they fooled me. They transported you. Yeah. I. Uh, at this point, we've recorded all these out of order, and some we recorded a year and two months ago. And I realized I put a little mea culpa on the uh, subreddit that the two episodes that came out, like the 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 one with Julia, and then the the one about the finale, previous to that, uh, we had a long discussion. In both of them, we had a long discussion about the the word cunt and yeah. But I didn't know that those would be on two consecutive episodes because one was a hundred years ago and sure. the other one was like a couple of weeks ago. So I do want a little mea culpa to the audience there. Just cunt heavy. We were was cunt Tim heavy, but also specifically was cunt heavy. I was cunt heavy, but also cunt heavy. <laughs> Sounds like like I'm gonna get a New York Times email that the word of the day is cunt heavy. <laughs> cunt heavy. A former cobbler who can do uh, upholstery. Uh, did, you guys, did you guys know that uh, I think it was Tony Roach when they were doing uh, uh, the thick of it, uh, ultimately created what was the Oxford Dictionary uh, word of the year? No. Which was omnishambles. Yes, yeah, that's right. Omnishambles was used in an episode of the thick of it, and it became the Oxford English Dictionary word of the year. That's got to feel good, right? That's got to feel good. Do you know what they listed your expertise as Karen Collins as? I don't think we're going to get there with Contevi. I just want to throw that in. But Common go ahead. Sense. Yeah. Common sense. That's, right. That's like that first line <laughs> yeah, is it? to you, and then you try to come on to me. Oh, that's Jonah right. Does. Yes, yeah. in the 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 hangar in the air yeah. in the yes. Yes, and then I. Ca- oh yeah, that's right. I'm in the very last scene. It's just like a an yeah intro. at the airport. Yeah. And you are also. We just released Leon. And yeah. you're, Iran. That's right. So, uh, Brian Husky, Husky, our friend. Oh my and God. you are also in that moment because you are thrown in a little bit more as like a, a, a like a it's a little bit more nefarious. We yeah. don't see the 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 the, du- the duplicitous part of you in that scene. It's right. just kind of like, oh, who's this person coming in who might be who replacing? acts like she belongs yes. here for no reason. We've never met her before. Yeah, yeah. And it really works for Amy's storyline because yeah. Amy keeps getting pushed further and further away. <laughs> I from really the... trigger Amy. Yeah, you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, you're perfectly built to trigger Amy. Oh, so uh, whilst the party's gearing up for the convention, false statement on MDB. I hope you're listening. <laughs> Selena's team is busily trying to bolster her future chances by shoring up the ticket so it's Mm. a convention yeah why does she need to shore up the ticket like are people at that convention not gonna no get behind her it's because is it doyle doyle bails he he decides he's gonna get off they find out that the sexy mexi (laughs) andrea savage uh laura montez is gonna become the veep for her uh the person running she's running against okay and so they decide that they that doyle is no longer like an old white man isn't gonna cut it they need someone uh like exciting so then that's when they think we should have danny chung coincidentally doyle resigns and, right. and they have that amazing scene her and ben yeah he tells him it's going to be prostate because you were fondling teddy was fondling yeah Jonah yeah in the where she has to pretend like she's mad at him that he's resigning stepping yeah. off the ticket I'm but more, she's yeah. really thrilled about it i'm more like obsessed with like at a convention like this why is everyone getting up at the podium when we know whoever selena chooses yeah and She's our delegate. Like, what are all the speeches for? Like, at, a, well, at, a, at, a, at an open primary, it seems a little more like we got to get everyone behind who we're going to nominate. Is it the Democratic National Convention? Yeah, is I that think this what is it is? the Democratic so National like Convention. So it's like speeches all day for yeah. like three days. Yeah. And I like, think. it's also about sort of like, you know, uh, like blessing the, the up and coming uh, generation. Recognizing them. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. Like Obama, Obama right, had, had, had a, that big speech. At the one, the two thousand and four, yeah. yeah, yeah, he made his bones. and so like You're that, right. like launched him into national prominence. So they're like trying to like get the young kids out of the minor leagues and introduce them to everybody, but also yeah. like I think there is also a thing that at the conventions you have to, there are things that the president or the 
or the candidate maybe can't say themselves yet because they have to save that one particular bit of them saying it okay. till later. Mm. So they also have to have somebody come on before them and say, like, you know, I am I come from a West Virginia coal mine family and we are going to protect the workers. But like the, the you know, like the candidate can't say that mm. until a month before. So they're like okay. getting they're getting the party line out in all of those speeches. Oh, okay. So they're this not helps just like me. they're not having yeah. all the the candidate like blow it all in one speech at the convention. Got okay. Cuz I get all my political knowledge from shows like Veep. So, <laughs> yeah. I've never watched a real one. I am embarrassed this to is, say what I didn't know when I started. This but is then terribly written. But then as I learned you were it. going. Yeah. This is terribly written because it lacks what we like as improviser specifics. Mm -hmm. A new face is added to the team in the form of Selena's longtime associate, mm -hmm. making room for a longstanding member in her entourage to suddenly depart. So that's not a helpful description that's of a helpful show. Description, IMDb. Because I also would describe you more as a friend than mm -hmm. associate, right? Because you were friends in college. We went to law school together. You went to law school together. Joining the recently redundant Dan <laughs> to the list of former Meyer staffers. Again... Not, yeah. Look, it's Amy. Did, Why don't they say okay? We did not come here to bury anyone. Are they but trying I, to like not do spoiler? Well, alert? they're willing to Maybe. use names because the next sentence is Jonah. Okay, well you're willing to use Jonah's name, so why not Amy and Karen Collins? Jonah is invited to rescue Dan's attempts at proving his worth at his new lobbying firm, while the new president seeks to make an alternative pitch ahead of the elections. Again, again, not a specific about a vice president, not a Hugh Laurie, not a Tom James. I guess if you want your storyline summaries, don't go to, I don't know. I, Are they a sponsor? I don't think so. Okay. Don't uh, go but they aren't now. <laughs> yeah, they uh, if, they were, if they were, if we were in negotiations. Shoddy workmanship. Yeah. Shoddy workmanship. Well, don't continue. I mean, we got to be able to dig ourselves out of a hole if they want to jump in. Yeah. All right. You can't be like, the only people that they're like are Nazis. You know what I mean? Like, you can't call them a Nazi and then walk that Does back. IMDB do that or does someone else do that? Well, it's on their oh, wait, user say, submitted. User submitted stuff. So. User submitted. Okay. That's Aaron. Yes. Uh, our but, producer. I mean, if you're going to read it and make sure it's. Good for the site. Can't somebody also, while they're reading it, punch it up? An unbelievably underwhelming high <laughs> to Aaron. I had already really said, I already greeted him off, mm -hmm. off of here. Okay, well, the audience doesn't know that. Hi. <laughs> Hi, big fan. <laughs> oh, see, there we go. Love that was work. so much better. Love your work. Love your space. Love Long time listener, created. first time caller. Here. See, aren't we glad? <laughs> aren't we glad that we took a Love moment? Love your snack selection. <laughs> oh, okay. Feels like that's a direct, right before we got on off mic, right before we got on mic, I was saying that maybe the snack selection here was, was not up to snuff. But and we discovered the closet. There is a Aaron closet. Aaron showed us where there's a real closet of. There you go. And I found a, a Bulk Nature's items. Valley crunchy oat bar. So that was great. Delicious. Yeah. Do you eat healthy? Can I ask you that? Half and half. Half and half? Yeah. So give me like your polar opposites in the last couple of days. Of healthy like, and then not healthy. Like cheeseburger sliders with french fries. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. Chick-fil-A. That's not healthy. Um, How about something healthy? Like a, sa a salad. From okay. Yeah. Well, I had a salad uh, yesterday. Ding, ding, ding. I see, uh, uh, I see Burger King and I see Chick-fil-A. They're all falling off of the chain potential. of sponsors. Of potential sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat healthy at, at those places sometimes. No, you can. An occasional Chick Fil A isn't going to kill it. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. you can't make it a regular habit. But well, we, I we every week. <laughs> Shake Shack makes a good version Shake of the Chick Fil A. Mm -hmm. Have you had their Chick Fil A I version? Have. I like it. No, you don't like not it. The same. I like no. But if I'm going to go to Shake Shack, I'm going to get cheeseburger. Yeah, that's true. I'm not going to do cheeseburger. I do the Chick Fil A sandwich okay. at Shake Shack. You know what? I, go I like the lettuce I go to and the extra pickle. Mm. I go to Chick-fil-A, I get a burger. Really? They don't have burgers I'm at Chick-fil-A. I'm just kidding. I've never been to one. <sighs> Thank you for fact-checking, because I was going to bite, bite that hook, line, and sinker. They only sinker. have chicken. They're... And they do have that hot ham sandwich. The hot ham sandwich? <laughs> no, they don't. Is there a hot ham sandwich? Yeah, hot. Really? No. <laughs> uh, hot ham. At the beginning of the episode, My Furlong's... daughter wanted to order a ham steak the other day at breakfast. I'm like, you I don't have... want a ham steak. It's going to be so big. It's like Canadian bacon. But it's, I think it's always like yeah. a larger thing. Yeah, it's a slice of a large. Like she's like, a it's ham. Ham, I'm like, ham. But steak to me means it's going to be a thicker Thick, cut yeah. and a lot more than you want. Yeah. So I, I like so a thin, salty. I like a thin ham. Yeah. So I like uh, Christmas time. Oh, honey baked. Like a, yeah, honey you baked. Know. 
spiral cut. More spiral of a spiral cut. cut than a honey. I don't then think you I'm... use the bone later for some pea soup. Oh, that's mm. smart. Oh, yeah, you mm. throw, get a stew throw going. Throw in some kind of bean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Delish. We do a lot of recipes, so anytime you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would be our first. Here in Holland, <laughs> hot wassail. <laughs> <laughs> or don't put in vodka. <laughs> yeah. Virgin uh, or So saucy. my last question is, <laughs> since you, because we'll, we don't need to cover the episode, because my observation. No, we do. We'll, that is the point of the we're of sort the of podcast. covering it we have covered almost none of it <laughs> well we covered the summary imdb pretty much That's nailed right. it yeah, they nailed it's it. a blueprint really <laughs> um is that playing a character like that is yeah. so hard because it's kind of a specific game and like you said it's you're not giving information she's either like way late yeah stating the obvious say, saying both things at the same time mm-hmm. And, like, you're kind of having this border around that character most, like, 90% of the time she's mm-hmm. doing things. It's that. So you kind of read the sides. And yeah. you kind of knew the approach. Did you have anyone in your life to draw on? Or did you have a confidence, like, oh, I'll just stick to this? Or did you feel... Cause what you do so well is you bring yeah. so much life and subtlety to every one of those things and i'm just Thank curious you. yeah it's it's a really hard thing to step into i think like you guys it's not just a catchphrase like i'm the office yeah, guy yeah you know what i mean but it, you are specifically that person well at that time you guys were like the comedy olympics and arriving mid-season and you're in a groove you're in baltimore nobody has anything to do but work mm-hmm. right so you are you're how many 18 pages a day or something insane and we and i remember it was like it was go time and it was probably always go time Mm -hmm. um and i was just in it all of a sudden and in every so you got some rehearsals scene no you you did it no so i don't remember i don't remember rehearsals so after you got it they flew you out to baltimore oh you know what we did do rehearsals in the four seasons right i think we we forget everything yeah i think we did do rehearsals but Okay. I don't think, uh, I don't remember. I mean, I guess, yeah, we did. And then they would t- go away and take, because we had scripts, and then mm-hmm. they would go away and take what we had done some and put them in. So you think you and Julia had some moments, or you did some full scenes before you actually filmed your first thing? I don't remember okay. that. Okay. Was it, from what, you, from what you can remember, and I don't know if you can, was it was that the game from the first moment that I you think were going to so. be? Okay. Yeah, that I'm just, I never make a definitive statement that yeah. I'm always presenting the other side. Like, I just say yes, and then I say no. Yes or no. It and could did be. you, what else did you think, like, going into it like i'm sure like you had i don't know like i'm because you do it so well i feel like there's depth behind it and i'm just well, curious if you had any I'll other say, thoughts about like, it f- the f- the wardrobe helped a lot because it like i mean just putting those clothes on and those spanks and ev- you know it's like all put together and pulled up and um but then also uh I think Armando, I think I had a, like, at first I was like, had a little bit of stage fright, like, because you guys were like, just firing on all cylinders. And I was coming in and saying my lines, Mm -hmm. but he was like, he came in at one point and said, uh, just, just repeat everything she says. And I was like, he was like, just do whatever you want, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, are you, you know, are you sure? And and once I... So hit, sort of go off script a little more. Yeah. And, but just like, yes, and her essentially. Right. And mm-hmm. then I started to just really literally repeat everything she said. If she was shaking her head, no, I would shake my head. No. <laughs> if she was shaking her head, yes, I would, I would look at her while she was making a decision. Like I'm considering it. Yeah. And then it was funny. It just started to be so funny. And then like after a day of that then you guys were all like i remember kevin it's kevin right yeah he he was like all right i'm into you know like he, like he, he, he was like that. reserving judgment yeah. on me for a little bit and then he was like yeah yeah i like you you know yeah like you can you can hang or whatever yeah and so that made like that once we start once i started once i did that scene on the couch yeah where I was just like, mm-hmm, I, you know, <laughs> yes. And then we repeated thank you at the same time. Yes. And uh, 
And it just felt like we were all off to the races at that point, uh, which was great. Yeah. There was in that first scene, like, uh, uh, I do love it. It starts with Doyle. Uh, not Doyle, uh, Furlong quoting scripture. Yeah. I always love when we get to see the public facing yeah. Furlong, which is always yes. like, I love my beautiful wife and God fuels yeah. me. Yeah. Yes. And then behind the scenes, we He's get the Furlong filthy. that we know. Yeah. Uh, so while they're like workshopping the, the kiss, yeah. uh, while they're workshopping the kiss, uh, I did notice in rewatching it that you're just right behind her. You're yeah. only doing two things. You are shaking your head yes or you are moving yeah. your head no. There's nothing else yeah. going on. You're yes or uh -huh. no or whatever yep 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 and yeah. i will say about furlong in his public persona he's still the same person he doesn't change his personality he just <laughs> says different words it is that he's is not true. like a phony he's like and god bless you you know he's just yeah. like i'm roger furlong and i love christ yeah <laughs> and then he's backstage he's like fuck that ass fucking asshole he should fuck himself but he's still the same guy in that first scene there's like a cut we immediately in like uh, uh, sort of off to the side everybody starts planting the seeds of how they're all frustrated with you yeah and uh you know amy says like she has not said anything declarative in an yes. entire week yeah. and everybody is agreeing and you say something about something being an imperfect science yes. and, and he's like well science is uh, by science its definition is, is that like that by yeah. definition it is perfect or whatever and then she's and you're like well that's up for debate <laughs> and he is like extraordinary like <laughs> The fact that it's even making the robot sort of flummoxed yeah. is a really wonderful part I think part what of you it. do well, this is like your fan club, so <laughs> we all need it. And it's unsolicited. Oh, there is, there it's is unsolicited. a constructive criticism. Oh, it, it, yeah, yeah, let me know. Okay. Let me is, know. I think you're, you'll know. What you, I've already recorded it, but yeah. You, it's your sense of importance that you really fill out. Like you weighing yeah. in yeah. Yes. as if it's a nugget and the way you fill the room and the way you step yeah. in at moments. I think that is really funny too. Like there's yeah. something that, that's just hilariously and get ready. Karen's got a little nugget here. What even when you're not speaking. I'll just like rip, but I then I start repeating yeah. what Amy says and like as if no one's like, no one has heard it. I just yes. repeat yeah. it exactly. And then what's so funny to me is once Selena turns on me, which happens Yeah. after the big blow after up. After the big blow up. That is one of my favorite And I do the Selena. same exact thing. I I'd step in where I shouldn't. Yeah. It's all of a sudden not okay. You yeah, know what you I mean? feel yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm Karen. She just, the look that she gives you. Oh my God! It's whenever Julia decides to do that thing where she's just like, I'm gonna fucking stare at you yeah, for a minute. Yeah. Like that moment is incredible. Well, jumping ahead, the moment where you know Karen's quickly out is when she ruins the joke at the end about the Tom James story and then he said I'll, I accept or whatever she says and there's just this deathly silence and it's like so oh that fucking was, Karen do you remember filming that because that is one of my favorite that's so things fun. that has ever happened to that's me that's like a lesson life. in beating a dead horse that whole multiple because that was not scripted nope and it wasn't no tell us yeah and Armando came in and said uh I'm going to have you take it. I'm going to have you steal the, and I was like, I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, I'll let it, you know. And I think he told you guys. Probably. Yeah. There uh, is also a possibility that he didn't and yeah. he just let. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's the third time that she's making him retell it. Mm -hmm. And I, who was new? You were new. You were the yeah, last Mike one to come comes in. back in. Yeah. And everybody was just like having the best. It was just the best energy. Oh, and I laugh at the, the setup. Best. And Selena's like, no, no, that's not <laughs> even it. I think <laughs> that dovetails with my favorite. Whenever Mike gets excited about stuff, I love it. And he's like, when it does the setup, you're like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And then I steal their thunder and I'm laughing at myself, mm -hmm. retelling the story and nobody else is laughing. Yeah. And then I said the word tremendous. <laughs> and when I said that, when we were filming it the first time, Julia collapsed on the sofa out of frame because she was laughing, laughing so, so hard. hard and they couldn't use that take or so. Anyway, it was one of my like my proudest moments uh, ever in my yeah. whole career. That that thing that you're talking about, like the collapsing and not being able to finish, I feel yeah. like is a thing that was corpsing. that would happen. Call it corpsing. corpsing. The British people call it corpsing. <laughs> you corpse a little bit. I felt like it happened 
It was always going to happen in those moments where we are basically shooting in one location for four yeah. days. And yeah. by the end of yes. those four days, you don't exist anywhere else in the world but that room. Yeah. You guys had been in there for so yeah, long. Yeah, we that, were in there that for, whole episode yes. for us was always in the conference room. Yeah. And that bit particular, I think there was a lot of newness to it and improv around it because i think mm -hmm. we kind of <clears throat> workshopped it a little bit yeah and also we're all laughing so when you're actors that are laughing yeah. you're just you're emotionally raw and vulnerable yeah. yeah yeah and we had been i don't know if you remember this probably not you and i and maybe maybe someone else were doing we were doing like a dumb improv bit where we were like we were improvising <laughs> off as camera or on yeah camera. Oh. we were just like in the bedroom like waiting for them to sh shoot yeah. the Danny Chung stuff or something and we started doing like uh, a bit where we were like like New York acting school and we were like get good at acting come <laughs> <laughs> learn how to say emotions and co convey how you feel at an acting school it's the acting school or something like you and I and we were just yeah we were playing we were improvising as these characters and then we did it for so long and then Kevin got excited about it and started to join in do you yeah. remember and then we would be in between a take and we would be like yes. we would somebody else would like riff on it and everybody would laugh it was so dumb <laughs> so fun and then later there was something at a convent, like at a convention. I think it's the it's like the next episode or something. When we're at the convention, we're all on stage holding hands. Mm -hmm. We were doing that same. We were doing something similar to that. When is that? Is that maybe this like season? no? It's not this season because Karen's at, out after this episode. She's out after this episode, but she comes back. We might have. By the way, we may have there's, filmed. We something. may have filmed it. No, it's on stage because there's a moment where I go to hold her hand and she. <laughs> Doesn't. She does. She moves away. Well, the from fact me. is, we may have shot that for this episode. Yeah. Because the reality is, she's never on stage in this. Yeah. When episode. Was the, maybe then we came back for that. Anyway, I have photos of us backstage, and I've seen the. I've seen it. Okay. You have? So it exists somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like we need to project more confidence that we remember <laughs> a lot more than we do. Well, I feel like also there's a thing where like. Potentially, Pierce got brought into the room, honestly, because Kevin gets dispatched oh, yeah, to yeah, go get yeah. Pierce. And I suspect we may have shot a quick scene with Pierce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so there are pieces that we lost. So right, that may have course, been a piece. Of course. I want to throw this out because this is also a little bit of a succession a rewatch yeah. show because we just bring up succession a lot because okay. there is like a crossover with yeah. writers. Pierce, for the first time, I see some Wamsgams vibes oh. from Pierce. The kind of folksy Midwestern punch on the arm. Oh. There's something in there. I feel like those are like maybe sister, those are like sister characters in, in a way that like... It's tenuous. I'm, I'm not going to give it to you full. <laughs> wow. Full observation. That's Matthew McFadden, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah McFadden? I, I think Mc, it's... I think it's McFadden. I don't think so. There's a Y in there. There is, but I think it's pronounced McFadden. No, it's McFadden. How do you pronounce mea culpa? Mea culpa. Mea culpa? I say mea culpa. Yeah, mea culpa. It's not mea. How do you say heroin? Heroism. <laughs> heroism. Oh, yeah, the Danny <laughs> Chung. I, say, I would say heroism. I probably would ruin it. I, uh, uh, I would say, I, I really do think that that Danny Chung moment is him like trying to rebrand heroism so that people associate yeah heroism it's not a heroism it's heroism that makes and that's sense a, then that's the danny that's chung smart, way. though that's a you know smart I mean? actor move too uh, i just leave it that way yeah because they're like dumb americans say it wrong there is like we let's maybe let's trunk let's try this let's truncate <laughs> the entire don't tell me what to do first i of all. look we are partners in this yes, but, I, I, but I, what you, can i go back now that you've said we're going to truncate it and yeah. and and talk about it. something else make it longer yeah so yeah. at the thing that you say don't doesn't exist but i've definitely seen on television uh -huh. um this is great i will say from on this side getting interrupted and being completely <laughs> taken over by everybody else in this room is actually great aaron if you want to jump in on that too the next Hi, time i go aaron, say something you were saying <laughs> you want to be more like open and not over talk so that we're trying to I work know. on it all we were doing comedic improv games and <laughs> 
Julia wanted to be a part of it. Do you remember this? She's I'm like, sorry, what's no. she's like, what's the game? What's the game? She yeah. she loved she it. She yeah. came in and she was like, what is it? What is this game? Because we were do. She was like, oh, do you know another improv game? She was like, tell me an improv game. Let's play it on this stage while we're, <laughs> were we waiting. doing like old school like teaching improv games or a bit. I think we were doing a bit, and yeah. then she wanted to know what the rules were, and we were like, oh. and so then she was like, well, what's what's an improv game we could play right now? That would be fun. And then we were like, oh, yeah. well, we could do three-headed, G, you know, what what's that one? Three, three-headed three genius or three-headed. Where we finish each other's sentences? Yeah. Okay. I don't wow. know. We did one of those, imp, like one o- improv, improv 101 improv. games. Wow. Yes. And she did it with us. And it was you and me and maybe a couple other folks. Wow. You were there. Sufu was there. A couple other folks? Folks. Folks? No, I, heard folks. Folks. I heard folks. I heard I heard sort of like a Robbie folks. Now are you going to do this on everything I say? Uh, well, only the things that you pronounce wrong. <laughs> well, it makes Not me happy everything. that folks. you co- you color in the stuff that you remember. And I also think like it is so funny. Like we were filming all day, but we had so much energy to do bits to pass time. Like I know that takes a lot of energy. That was a crazy. That there was one day. Well, I know you guys when you did the um, when you did the. Because that was like the same, maybe the same week or the week after. Because I came back to Baltimore twice. Okay. Um, probably for the plane scene and then probably for this episode. No, the plane and this were together. Really? Were, yeah. Then I come. Maybe what is she this? comes back and maybe, no, I yeah, come, we have I come back because they brought me back for the announcement of the winner. Do you remember That's that? That's right. We were yes. in, we were in that room. Of, of, when, uh, oh, the 10? The uh, on 10, which would be the, like, you know, when the, Oh, when maybe that's like when tie. we're on stage. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you were on stage for 10. Yeah, and oh. I, because I have a photo also of Armando being down. You guys say, Ar- I say Armando. Is that wrong? You say Armando? Or no, no, it's Armando. Armando. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have a picture of him because it was the a, one time the you've stages been right. were on. The- <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? you. I'm out How of here. Dare you. I'm going to take dare my liquid you. Treat death our guests. and Don't get the- sit down. Sit down, please. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tim, we have a guest. This right- is outrageous. He's feeling needy. All right, we have to give Tim more attention. So uh. we'll try to cater to Tim's needs. But finish your story first. I have a photograph Please. of him, of, of Armando. Uh, there was a raised stage that we were on for that, like, hand-holding thing. And he was, like, at, he's, he was at the bottom under the stage, and his chin barely reached. And he has his arms, and he's, like, his chin smiling. on his arms, and he's just smiling. And it. And I took a photo of it. I don't know. Uh, why, will you but. send it to us so we yeah. can like yeah. post it when this episode yeah. goes up? That's yeah. wonderful. That's um, great. That's a great memory. I uh, I would like to. That is a nice memory. So you're I'm glad condense. we found out what the we we were really like. No, you don't come back. It wasn't we in really this episode. Were. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I came back for that like. And no, there's really no explanation either. Like when I come back for that, I'm just there in the room. It's it's probably just implied like, I oh my God, she doesn't know what she's doing. I feel like that might, like she, I feel like there might be like a spiraling. Yeah. Like I just bring me everybody. Yeah. Bring Karen. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Well, the spiraling starts in this episode. Like Selena doesn't know what she's doing. No. She's constantly consulting Karen in the beginning and Karen's yeah. not saying anything helpful. She's like, yeah. Or you give a new word. You just say the same thing with a different word. It's a couple of those. Uh, Selena's like, yeah, that's good. I, I will say, like, it, although it is very funny to watch it happen, it is probably a great way to keep a job and maintain a job and move forward. In, yeah. In, yeah, Karen would survive. the person feel yeah. good about their own choices. Yes. Yeah. And there you're are, saying yes to the most powerful person in the room? Yeah. yeah. If you're aligned with them, yeah. you're going to survive. Karen would survive, DC, 100%. Oh, 100%. Yeah, she would keep moving up. I was going to say, let's maybe because, like, let's just Go truncate sure. the entire uh, Dan, Jonah, Zucchini, Sam, uh, Dan, Jonah, Richard, Purcell part let's just yeah. kind of go through that whole thing because it kind of exists outside of it i don't know that we necessarily have to like jump back and forth yeah right. just that uh so everybody's outside of, out of town for the convention they have a zucchini guy purcell has a zucchini guy uh in town he's like well you can get dan you can get somebody in front of him you can get him have you ever heard of jonah ryan you ever heard of jonah ryan because he's like well that's gonna be hard everybody's out of town for the convention like you fucking you do it dan uh it's like oh you ever heard of jonah ryan he's a great guy we're old friends we'll have him in uh, Sydney Purcell, who is one of my favorite characters on the show, uh, has a moment that reminded me of my agent. 
in which all of a sudden he's like, yeah, and then we're going to go get something to eat. Probably not fucking zucchini though, right? Like <laughs> In this way of like... That's Pete Gross. He's amazing. He's amazing. I love him so much. And for what for for a very nice and caring and so nice and warm, really man. lovely. To yeah, he's a very nice with. man. He, His uh, Rolodex has more names than a drug mule, mule's poop pocket. Poop. <laughs> 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 it's another good one. I I just love that he's like I'm just gonna cut through all the stuff that we might say where we're like yeah I love zucchini and it's like we all know what we're doing here (laughs) in that way that like an agent is just like oh yeah yeah like even something that you're emotionally invested in they'll be like oh yeah that went pretty well nobody really got a bump off of it but and it was like (laughs) oh (laughs) yeah 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 that sort of thing of like I'm removing all emotion from this and I'm just gonna go straight for like whatever that is is that the id or the ego like like yeah, that thing inside of you that only that only weighs and balances thing against things against. Well, things. I think in some ways, unfortunately, to, to keep commerce moving, somebody has to say the ugly things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't sit in niceties yeah. all yeah, the time. Yeah, And so somebody's got to go. All right, you fucking yeah. There was <laughs> there. Uh, Do you ever watch that F one show, The Drive to Survive? Yeah. I just sounded like my mom by saying, "Do you ever watch The Drive to Survive?" Where you, you ever put, watch Bosch? Do you ever watch the Bosch? The Bosch. The Bosch. Goli- the Goliath. Did you ever watch the Goliath? Um, so there is a moment where uh, what I'm assuming is, okay, we're going to get Aston Martin uh, knocked off our sponsor list. But what I'm assuming is just a truly mm. terrible guy. Uh, the guy who owns like the Aston Martin team. Yeah. He's like a Canadian billionaire. Mm-hmm. When you're first introduced to him in like season two or whatever, he comes in and he like sits down and he's like kind of a big imposing guy and he just goes, you have me for 20 minutes. And that's, and everybody just is like, oh yeah. But like to be like, and he seems like a dick and it seems like an awful way to live. Mm-hmm. But at some point there probably is somebody that just has to be like, I can't yeah. do anything else. I, you have, I, you have 20 minutes and I, I, and I wish it wasn't that way, but you might be right that there might need to be some niceties. God, I wish I had that. Like, as yeah. a, as a, I'm, I just care too much about people thinking I'm so nice. Yeah, I couldn't like, like if you were in the car line and you know a mom is talking to you about something and it's just mm-hmm. going on forever, you'd be like, yeah, gotta go, man. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, this is not a good story, or you know, what's well, the worst? What's the meanest thing you've ever bank. said to anybody? I did, I that, and never said on a podcast. Yeah, to an audience that will li- this will live on forever. Go when ahead. they like when the headline, this is the only place they're going to be. Yeah, we'll get. probably put this at the top of the episode. So yeah. go ahead, anyways. Not I to put too say, much weight on it. I think I did say this to someone. Did I say this? I don't. I can't remember where I said it though. What does that tell you? I told uh, a, a woman who'd left me a twenty cent tip that she could go fuck her own face. And I, <laughs> And I screamed it out across the good entire Bull Moose Saloon as she went out the door. That's good. Where is the Bull Moose Saloon? So I'm 44th and 9th. I don't think it's the Bull Moose anymore, but it was okay. for many years. Right by Rudy's. Yeah, around the corner from Rudy's. Yeah, yeah and the produce, right, right next to the producer's club. And is, yeah. there, <laughs> is there a sense of the Bull Moose Tavern that, that, like, that they're expecting that kind of the treatment there not necessarily but like i'm not giving like i'm there for the cash in hand and i'm out the door and i'm yeah. i'm a great and waitress you probably had a long shift and you were probably doing yeah theater i start at, at four yeah. Yeah. i start at 4 p.m and i'm done at 2 a.m right and you know what fuck the 20 yeah. cents that bitch fuck that yeah. Yeah. give me nothing have some balls yeah Do you I, remember her name you want to name? I didn't her? know. I didn't know her name, but she was a manager at she the Waldorf Astoria. She does run Astoria. a studio. Right Whoa, now. we're. I bet we can find out who she is. Because she was my friend Tom Brown, who's a bartender, salaried bartender at the Waldorf Astoria, who's like was an amazing guy who came in like almost every night. We had a lot of regulars that were that I love, and uh, she was like I think a bunch of people came in after their shift, and she was one of the managers of the bartenders or the wait staff there. And um, yeah, she even she pe- works she a, in the. That's, well, that's what I said to her during she's our back and deaf. forth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you had a back and forth. Yeah, we had a oh, back and forth. what did she respond? What did she say? I think I said something like, "Well, she said I work in this business, and I and I know what what's what or whatever." And I was like, "Well, you must not have any respect for the people that are under your employ if you're going to leave me a fucking twenty cent tip." 
Like, I don't get a salary. I don't get an hourly here. Yeah. Like, what you leave on the table minus the check, that's what I go- take home at night. So me rushing up and down these flights of stairs, bringing you pitchers of water and one sampler platter, bitch. Yeah. Like, that's not going to cut it. Yeah. Like, at least a couple bucks. Yeah. Like, at least, at the very minimum. But even t- the 20 cents is more of a fuck you than nothing. I yeah. know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's well, like she uncovered. was like, uncovered. No, like, yeah, like, don't let, do not round this up to the nearest <laughs> dollar. That's what happened. It was a $29.80 check, and she left. they left $30, and there were eight of them. That mm. is, and they were splitting you, a sampler. Where's platter. the standard twenty percent tip on parties at eight, Lennon? I, I, well, I, add, I mean, I was like, I'm not going to add it on a tw- on a thirty dollar check. Like, if no. it's hundred and sixty dollars, I'm definitely adding okay, it and you're rounding probably serve up to twenty two. But I don't know. I mean, honestly, does the Bull Moose Tavern have that policy? I don't think if I go nothing to the Bull Moose Tavern, nothing exists in writing there. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, yeah. Can... It all gets burned down. There's like fourteen <laughs> beers on tap. Almost all of them are harp. Like it's <laughs> like. No matter what the label is, like I would have to go when I got there, be like, what are we out of? And go around the corner and buy like Jack Daniels. So we would have Jack Daniels. For oh, the night. wow. Mary Jack Daniels. You know, it's just like, wow. it was crazy. It was a crazy. That's good training. <laughs> it's like New York City, though, you know. That's yeah. your next sitcom, The Bull, Mo- <laughs> the Bull Moose. Uh, that's a great life. Uh, going back to this truncated uh, Sam... And oh, I had a worse thing, but it was unintentional worse no, thing. Go ahead. You know the restaurant Little Dom's? Yeah. yeah. Morgan, this isn't my story, but Morgan reminded me of this one. She went in, she was meeting some friends at Little Dom's, and there was a debonair man kind of dressed in a suit, and he was leaning up by the uh, uh, podium in the front where the host yeah. is. And she walked in, she hadn't been there, and she's, she's like, and he was so short, she's like, oh, you must be Little Dom. <laughs> And he was just a small person. Oh, no. But he was kind of out front like an owner. Yeah. And she guessed it. Morgan said that? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, no. What happened? He was like, no, I'm not. (gasps) And then she's like, okay, sorry. But she wasn't being mean. I yeah. think no. That's the thing. If about the place Morgan, is I called know, Big like, Jacks, would never... if, if the place is called Big Jacks and there's a guy wearing shoulder pads and he's right by the, the front, you'd be you like, like hey, throw what's that up? Off. That's Big Jack. Hey, you must be Big Jack. Oh my god. Yeah. And it, it wasn't little dumb. So that's kind of the worst thing, but in an unintentional way. Oh, that, that does is seem tough. like all more. <laughs> that's more tough. She must have felt so bad. Yeah, it wasn't great, but she did. She didn't. She would never. It didn't linger because it was years. sort of innocent. Yeah. I want to throw this out. Yeah, yeah. That uh, we're going to end up talking about this when Emily Pendergast comes on the show, who plays. Uh, I love my, her too. She's so incredible. funny. Did you guys you, together. She were was. Was outrageous. she on Succession? <laughs> no, she's, oh, she's in White House Plumbers. Plumbers. That's where I saw her. Uh, uh, which I have seen the pilot. It's really good. Yeah, it is. Dave directs the fuck out of it. Yeah, it's very stylized. Yeah, yeah it's very good. Uh, Emily Pendergast for yeah. a long time worked at like when she first moved out to LA uh, worked at the Saddle Ranch which is a pretty oh, yeah. Yeah. pretty shitty like yeah. sunset strip Brutal. bar that has a uh, like a, a, a like, bull a bull like a, yeah. an electric rodeo is is that what they call that I don't think so but that's <laughs> I but like a mechanical it. bull I like it. Not mechanical an bull electric is better rodeo. electric rodeo come on down to the electric IMDB rodeo. might call it an electric rodeo yeah they would <laughs> and then we would read it on the podcast like fucking dickheads <laughs> so I uh, uh, she for a long time and I'll, I will let Emily tell the stories and elaborate on this but uh, when when Suge Knight would come into the saddle ranch. Emily was the only one that he would allow to wait, to, on. To wait on. Yeah. So if she wow. wasn't working and Suge Knight come in, came in, they would call the, her. The the <gasps> manager would be like, I, "I like Suge's here. You got to come in." Oh my! And God. she would come in and serve like just, just wait them. on just wow. them. And then I don't. I mean, she's so charming and so funny. Like. You probably could get yeah. a guy who would like run over another human being with their car to yeah. to like you. And yeah. you'd be like, oh, I kinda like this lady. That, that is a rough place because yeah. my brother was telling me his friend was in from out of town and the one thing his kids want to do in their twenties is they want to go to the saddle ranch. I don't know if they saw it in a movie, but they thought yeah. it'd be a cool sunset mm-hmm. strip thing to do. So they went there. Turns out there was like a shouting match and a fight, and somebody was coming at one of the staff, so then all the staff got involved. And it went out on the street into oh this my big God. fight. And then he said the kids were staying at their seat because their dad's like, we're not going near this. And then he said that there were two big, muscly dudes with a baby 
who left their baby at the table and went out to the fight. Oh, oh my no. God. So they, they, they said that to break it up or to like make yeah. sure nothing got broken, but they were with a baby and they left a bit. Like, that's a rough place. Why are you bringing a baby to the saddle <laughs> ranch in the first place? I that's know. pretty I mean, bananas. It kind of Baby's feels... first electric rodeo. Baby... <laughs> <laughs> By play school. <laughs> Uh, so, Jonah, Sydney Purcell, Sydney Purcell lobbying uh, comes. They they come in and Jonah. Uh, there's um, makes Dan make him a coffee. Makes Dan make him a coffee. This yes. is something I'm not great at, which is bringing the previous scene into the next scene, unless I've shot the previous scene directly before. Like if if we shot these two scenes a week apart, I would have never remembered to have a cup of coffee at the beginning. <laughs> oh, of the yeah, summer. yeah. Was that that's not your job. That's continuity or props Well, I mean or but I do think it was it was an additional bit that I threw in. Like I don't think it was scripted for me to for me to compliment the coffee oh. to him. There was no payoff. It was just sort of right yeah. into the meeting and yeah. I just wanted but like but had it been shot a week apart, I would have been like, I don't know what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who are these people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, also, you're just playing the jokes to the best sometimes. Like, forget about what just happened. Like, what's yeah. happening here? Let's mm -hmm. make sure the jokes are the funniest. That is a weird thing about, uh, just only to bring up Succession, because I think it happens on there. But it has to happen on almost every comedy. And it also happens on ours. That to a certain degree everything has to be reset at the beginning of the next episode like emotions carry through yeah. in in hours but but you do kind of whatever you build to you kind of have to take a couple steps back the next episode like just by design mm -hmm. yeah you know like something happens that is earth shaking but then the next episode you come back and it's like all right yeah we're kind of still dealing with that but it's not really shaking everything up yeah, but like settled it settled a bit it's settled a bit but like in breaking bad it's just like i don't know we shot a guy in the head and the, the next episode it's like oh we shot a guy in the head we have to start making steps forward from that you, right. does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah um so uh anyway i didn't that, know succession was a comedy it is it's an hour long i don't know that it's it, no it is a drama but it is... It's comedic. But definitely. it has comedic elements. Tons and there, it, yeah. And there, it, it is comedic in that way that a lot of stuff gets reset episode to episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so Jonah and uh, Richard... Uh, Richard orders an eggnog latte if it's in season, <laughs> and, he, and he answers his own question, which is always funny. No, I'll, you know what? I'll just take a skinny half-calf latte or whatever. And then... Uh, oh, uh, in this moment is when these guys... Realize, find out that Doyle is leaving the ticket. Right. Yeah. The zucchini guy is not impressed. He says, all right, well, you guys figure it out. They're all like, well, we're going to call Amy Bruckheimer. And by the time they call her, Amy has also left. And the mm -hmm. zucchini guy's mad. And then Jonah and Richard both try to shake Sidney Purcell's hand on the way out. That was a, that one of my funny. favorites. And this is one thing that I love. Like the second one, the second one when I'm walking out and I go to shake his hand, that was not course, scripted. That wasn't not. part of it. But that is just a beautiful natural reaction from no. Pete. He's, no, like I already fucking said it. He's so mad that he yeah, had to say no. it twice. I also, like, Pete you're Gross. stupid for offering. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think I would ever do that? What are you reading that makes you think I wanted the first one or this one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so that's all fun stuff that happens. But the so main tied, focus of yeah. the episode is in the, is in the hotel. So room. tied to that, so we find out uh, Doyle steps down and they make him to claim his <laughs> prostate is messed up because Teddy's been fondling Jonah. I'm just jumping to Patton's. Farewell. Oh my so God. Teddy gets yeah, called gets on fired. the carpet. Yeah. And he says everything. I, and this is like his parting lines, seemingly from a show. He comes back later. But at the moment, <laughs> he's like, everything I did was to serve you, sir. And, and, that, go, and that goes double for fondling Jonah. <laughs> and that technically is his last words. By the way, he's worried about saddling Selena with no options. He says, like, well, who's she going to find in two hours? And he's like, I don't care. And he's like, what are we going to do? Pin a dick on Gary? I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, but Teddy has loyalty to the party. I think that's mm. more... Or is it just, I don't want to lose my job? I think it's more self-serving okay. and more like... Yeah, because if he's not Veep, then Teddy's not okay. under the I took it as yeah. like, we got to serve the bigger... Yeah. The loftier goals of the party. But uh, it's 
he wants to talk him out of like su- career suicide, which okay. then, that's, I think but, okay. that's he works for him, right? Yeah, so, that's okay. that's the way that I yeah. took it. Okay, fine. Again, not to say that you're wrong. No, no, it's a good, are, it's a it's a good clarification. I mean, there are some things that are wrong. For example, some yeah, of your yeah, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear what s- specifically what you're talking <laughs> about. Um, but uh, but heroism, I that, yeah, her- heroism. Uh, so, uh, Teddy, it is a very strange way for a major character in the first five episodes to exit. Yeah. Exit pursued by a bear in <laughs> just, oh, uh, the exit pursued by a bear conversation will be in the next episode. Okay. The, the follow up to that. And how's it pronounced? Exit? I don't think so. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I think it's um, Exunt. Exit. Exit. Exident. Exident. Check it. Check the Shakespeare man. Check it. Check the. What do they call it? The uh, glossary of terms. No, there's there's the. What's the thing that everybody goes to? It's like the original. The old English version, like the Canterbury Tales. No, there's like a there's like a thing. It's like the. It's like one of Cimmerillion. It's not the Cimmerillion. Fuck me. It's the. This, this is, is not the, the this liturg- is a Jeopardy question, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. this is um, bad radio right now. Waiting this for terrible. this answer. The second time you've accused me of being bad radio <laughs> on this. Uh, well, so- I just want to say that Jonah's being fondled was a major story, a big storyline, and I liked how they used it to get Doyle to do yeah. what they want. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Which I think they just figured it out as they went. I don't know if that. Like, I think they knew the 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 stuff in the lobbying world was going to happen, but I don't, I don't know if they knew like writing episode one that Teddy's ultimate demise would be used in exchange for getting Doyle to, <laughs> right, to take right. the fall in a way that like is related to prostate cancer. I what just is, like how the show does, does that. What does Ben say about it? It's like Christmas morning, only happy. Only I'm happy. <laughs> there is a great, when you're yeah. on TV talking about his prostate, I do love that there's Mike's thing of like, you know, it's very big. <laughs> Both the both the problem and the prostate, like yeah. the <laughs> yeah. My, and he goes his I prostate his, doctor, his prostate doctor. I know. love it when Mike gets to phys- gets physical because you have a couple like prat fall, like yeah. almost prat falls, but you catch yourself. But I remember specifically you in this episode, and then I think in the in the end episode that you'll see does exist you have like a bunch of like hallway running yeah, in the I hotel think, yeah and and it was so and we were behind you in some of them and we're all ru- it's all so funny you're so physically and funny it's all in the it cutting so room thank you it's all in the cutting room floor but yeah i do remember <laughs> like, that you ran into the like the room service tray yes yeah, side. yeah. Yeah, like really. Good. Armando actually, loves people in suits running through hallways. He's and I actually, kind of he, as many times as, about, as I've seen this episode today, when we were watching it together, I was like, "Was that bit planned? Your physical comedy around the running into the the, the room, room service tray? Because it yeah. looks, it's it, you sell it incredibly it's, well." And I keep you. thinking, like, "Oh, that must have just happened." It was acting. Also, because I'm clumsy, so you believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if that were like, if you also didn't know how to coffee. work a cell so phone good. while you were tripping on it, I'd be like, this is just. Or Mac. if I forgot a password, was that written or was that you? <laughs> or if I spilled coffee on myself? <laughs> I love it. After Doyle leaves, they have to all of a sudden they have to like flip through trying to get, uh, and they have this Laura Montez news. Uh, there was a scene, the scene with Danny Chung, yes. where he Randall does such a great job. Randall Park, who plays uh, Danny Chung does such a great job with like this sort of affable yeah uh, like this affable self-centeredness yeah where he's like he's both like an aw shucks guy while he's yeah. telling you about how he had a mania named after him yeah. like can you believe it like yeah. i had chung mania mania yeah. yeah i never thought i'd have a mania named yeah. after me it's yeah. so annoying it's so annoying <laughs> i love it so much so funny yeah I uh, he, he then, also likes his Bible, like yeah, Congressman yes, Furlong. Sure, he has, he sure. has two. Uh, his wife is his Bible, and also his Bible is his Bible. So yeah. he has to go. He has to go consult both of his Bibles, and she tells him to take all of the fifteen minutes that he has. Yeah, all as of much 15, of it. as much of the fifteen <laughs> minutes that you have. Yeah, to figure that out, and he says no. I believe because of the. The way that she does things, is yeah, that with that? Yeah, an operator. I, the way you operate, yeah, which is fine, but it, it doesn't agree with me. I just want to also overview is just like 
Selena doesn't have a good team around her, and it's already chaotic. Like, yeah. Karen is not a good choice. No disrespect no, to No, I agree. But Karen's not a good choice, and now she's putting all her trust in Karen, and now she's pulling out. Well, Doyle would have re- resigned anyways, but like, it's Anybody just interesting the chaos. Yeah. The like, chaos that, yeah. that's created to ultimately bring Tom James in, and he's almost like, what did I walk into? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the, they try to bring in Maddox, who just kind of like weirdly shits the bed because yes. he's like oh they told me I had to like make, make jokes. jokes and there's the great Selena moment where she's like oh um, you know and we are gonna let you know what's happening oh Ben is calling me and it pans over to a closed door and she's like he just closed the door well it's also one of those Michael Corleone moments where you know he's dead when he says like I like to get things happen not that you don't know how to make things happen but people say you don't want to make things happen. In that moment, you're like, okay, he's done. There's no words, but Selena's yeah. like, she already was like, what's happening? Yeah. And she it's just is, neat. Yeah. She is good. The one, one of the only things that Selena is good at is making a very snap decision to completely yeah. remove someone from her life. Yes. Like she does with you at the yeah. end. Just like, oh no, like I was full, I was full in on you and now I am full out. Yeah, um, but that also gives you a lot of leverage in the storytelling because you can bring back people that are funny, yeah, uh, or lose them if they're not, <laughs> if they're not funny or whatever if you want, yeah. and it, you'd never have to justify it. Do you want to call out one person from the show that, that isn't is not, that, that isn't funny, funny and you think was not invited back for that? Specific Could be purpose. somebody in the room. <laughs> oh no, I was on until <laughs> the very like end. You were oh. in all of them. Yeah, I was oh, in okay. all of them. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, no, not no. going to do that. Good call. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, wait, you're using American Sign Language to, sh- to spell out a name. <laughs> How dare you do that to me? Well, I'm just thinking of like from an EP stand, you know, like, yeah, like it would it would give you great flexibility because then you could just you can you don't have to justify anything for whatever happens in the future. You yeah. talk like such a showrunner. What's happened to you? <laughs> I don't you know. should be just this improviser. It's just the unions. <laughs> the unions. They're frustrating, aren't they? They're so frustrating. Scabby so the rat. What would Scabby so, the rat so say? So many unions. <laughs> so Catherine, by the way, so great. Oh, Fake kissing. And she does you her- on Selena's show. I don't know. What do you? Yeah, I don't know. Like you're, whatever Selena's face is, you turn instantly <laughs> to it. When Sarah is actually, and you know what? I We probably filmed every single moment of those convention speeches. Yeah. Yes. Like they had full speeches yeah. written and what ends up in there is Furlong talking about the Bible and Sarah saying, let's rock these United States, <laughs> which as much and as we've got a lot of more of that kissing so to look. Did you see that? Kiss? Yeah. Did it's weird it? because I, we bumped teeth. You didn't see that. Oh, it's so we'll awkward. We'll have more time to practice oh. our, all our lives. And then she starts dating Clea Duvall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. The I just love that is a particularly I do feel like I like I like where that come fr- comes from, like the young people around, like the children of politicians, yeah. if they are involved, that they are older and involved, always have to appeal to the younger set by saying stuff like, let's right. rock these United States. Right. And like you can tell how uncomfortable she is with it. Yeah. And then like there's like the gu- Kamala's yeah. like Doug Emhoff's daughter who was like, <sighs> yeah, so edgy, non-binary. Yeah. Like we were excited to have her front row. She has like, she like doesn't shave her armpits and has a, like a, like yarn bikinis. Yeah. 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 She's so edgy. We also had the guy in Louisiana who was oh, on yeah. death row and he's half acuted. Oh, half acuted. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And Selena doesn't care. Again, the disdain for anyone. <laughs> this goes back to our conversation about when did they all turn into it? Like, when was the moment that they all turned to the dark side? Uh, the disdain for whatever situation that person was in. I don't know if they were falsely accused, but they, no matter what, they are in immense pain. And it is just like, wait, do we have to? And then of do we have to deal with this? And you're like, well, this is now top of mind. <laughs> yeah, Selena this feels like, priority. I wish I was that guy on death row because <laughs> her life is so hard. And by the way, when he's going after Doyle, Ben says to him for condoning sexual abuse, he says, who do you think you are, the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> Which got stepped on, but I heard it. That's a great one. There is going to like, going to the, the Amy <laughs> part. Me laugh so much. I watched, I rewatched it right before this and I was just dying laughing. Yeah. I wish I could, someone sexually assault my staff and by staff, I mean my, my penis. penis. 
Roger Furlong? Uh, the, the moment. <laughs> Back it all. <laughs> Right, he's just the fucking best. He's so they got excited. They get excited from they for giving him filthy things oh to say. Oh Writers God. light up when oh, he's yes, yeah, in an course. episode. Of course. What's the worst, foulest, awfulest thing we could Ugh. have come well, out? I of mean, this do month? you remember the one? I don't know if I brought it up before, uh, but this one was in I think season five when he's yelling at somebody who's like new to politics, and he's like. Don't you fucking talk down to me. I've been I've been I've been in this business since your mom was throwing herself down the stairs belly first. <laughs> <laughs> like I like to try to kill the baby. To try to you, kill the when baby. When we did the live the fundraiser, the live fundraiser show, do you uh -huh. remember? Oh, yeah, and yeah, and everybody yeah. did their favorite. They like gave out favorite insults. Uh -huh. Was it Jonah insults or was it I think just favorite insults, oh, possibly. Oh, from the whole yeah, show. I think so. Yeah. Was this on really Zoom? Funny. Yeah. Okay. Remember you faintly that. remember at the beginning of the pandemic when we were all doing I feel like I, live Zooms. To, I feel like yeah, I've disassociated. Yeah. 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 I feel like yeah. I've disassociated yeah. enough to not remember that. Yeah. Still learning how to mute so people can't hear your life. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> And there's always one older actor that doesn't know how to turn their screen off, and they're just in every scene. I had to do. <laughs> they're just like laughing and watching in every scene. It's like an intimate two, like a table read. There's two intimate yeah. sexual, like between them. Yeah, and then they're just like. <laughs> they're just there, like flipping pages, but not muted, so you can hear the crumple Stirring of a paper. Very, chocolate licking very, spoon. I I did like a zoom. I, I I did a zoom independent movie about like yeah so you put, did yeah 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 with like it was like about like a, a funeral like the pa the matriarch of a family dies the family has to get together. It sounds uh, like Succession. Yeah, uh, it's called Succession. Oh, they filmed oh. that all on Zoom. Did you not know that we cover that in the rewatch? Okay, model. got it. So. Uh, and God bless them. They are two of my favorite performers on earth. Yeah. But what would happen was you would go to a, you would go to like your location and there would be a big box full of the equipment because you couldn't see anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would then set up your little iPhone camera. God. You would set up like the DP would be looking at your little square on zoom and it'd be like, okay, we got to block out the light from behind you. Can, like, is there a cardboard box? Put that in the window. That'll block out the light yeah. a little bit. But you were doing it all by yourself, including the tripods, the cameras, all the connections, all of it. Union-wise, a gaffer or a grip should have been doing that stuff, just so you know. True. Ye I'm That's sure we had some sort of... At your house? Regulation. Yeah, there was... You were probably violating a lot of the... I cleared whatever. this with the Scabby AMPTA. the rat. So <laughs> I, think it's okay, all, I think it's legit. Okay, well, if they said it was okay. So, uh, uh, God bless them. They are two of my favorite performers on earth, but Margo Martindale and Henry Winkler... Wow. Two, two weeks into this, we're still like watching them try to work the tripod with all, all of us there. Uh, and that puts a lot waiting. of pressure on them. It was, I mean, it was incredible. It was yeah. incredible. They are immensely talented people, yes, but they that are. is, that's, that's specifically not their, not their talent. Yeah. yeah. And it's also not their job. Yeah. Uh, the Amy meltdown, I want to get to yeah. because yeah. I so really. So we've had Latina Geddon, Montez. Uh-huh. Keeps suggesting, Amy keeps suggesting Tom James. Yes. Go ahead. She, she just won't keeps listen. Repeating it, Tom Karen James. Karen keeps James. pissing Amy off. Yes. Is she sent from the future to frustrate me or whatever Amy says? She, yeah. yeah. There is, I can't remember what it is that you say that finally ends it, but she's done like the, I know I sound like a broken record, but Tom James, Tom James, Tom James. And she, yeah. and by the way, like, shut up. You do say something declarative. You say, you know, Amy, you're being a little annoying. Yes. That was like a break from oh, the Karen yeah, moment. You say yeah. something that's almost your own thought. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, that is what sets her over the edge. But I remember in the table read, like that, that it's a great monologue, yeah. especially oh. the part when she's like, because of you, there will be no yeah. more women presidents yes. because yeah. we tried one and, and she, she fucking sucked. sucked. Yeah. Yes. It's a great line. Yeah. But I remember in the table read being like, Wow, there's really no way that Selena's not going to be like Selena's going to have to face this. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I saw the final cut of the episode that Julia did this sort of like really incredible choice, both yeah. for the show and for Selena, of still playing high status, even though everything that Amy is saying is warranted. Like she is running a shit show of a campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She doesn't make a choice. She doesn't make bad. She doesn't make 
good decisions. Yeah. Everything's bad. But she stood and, like, you know, as she's walking toward the door, Selena pops a chocolate in her mouth. Or pops something. a chocolate. Like and like, you know, it's like, Oreo. yeah, she's so like, weird. Um, you know, uh, looks like that little tirade is over. And then she comes back. And she's like, oh, no, we got a little bit more. Like there's like she yeah. manages to keep high status in that split level. Yeah. I owe you a belt notch. Yeah. Split level is my new term. I'm coining it. If for just, uh, for playing like multiple the two, they have multiple status levels, or you okay. know what I mean. Uh, so she plays that. I'm more of a ranch actor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a McMansion kind of guy. Okay, got it. I'm a mid mod. Um, that's the only other kind of building I knew. I'm a Neutra. Yeah, you're a Neutra. Um, sure. Am I pronouncing wow. that right? You are. I oh, think. Good. good job. Neutria, well, I those have big rats. We can do one thing. Yeah. You're a big rat from South America. Oh, that's Neutria. Sorry. <laughs> um, I do. I just Back love the Gabby. way that Selena is able to keep the status there in a way that I was completely not expecting. Given that yeah. everything Amy says in there is 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 well said, and everybody else's face is like, oh shit. Yeah. Like we're all like, oh shit. She's. That's bad. We that's really Well, I think bad. Karen thinks it's about her. <laughs> oh, so that's right. You're like Karen's probably thinking like I wish I didn't start this tornado. Uh, it's, yeah. It's all she's about jealous me. Or she's threatened by powerful women. Other powerful women. <laughs> and uh, I, but it, I agree about the Julia thing cuz I like you when we read it in the table read I'm like that is a wicked scathing yeah. Yeah. shredding of someone and to be in the room while Julia's doing that is like, oh my God, that's amazing because she is just like impervious to it, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's amazing. And it's, after, it's, yeah. And even after that, she knows, like she realizes she knows what's Amy's up with. right, yeah. She knows Amy's right about Tom James and she immediately sniffs you out. Yeah. But it's not like she's going to go back to Amy and apologize. Mm -mm. She's just like, no, I'm going to press on. And yeah. Karen's out and get Tom James in here. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, which then leads us to Hugh Laurie coming off an elevator, yeah. who immediately <laughs> is so charming. So wait, what does she say to you bef after Amy's rant? Do you remember? Well, she I say the thing about she just uh, that. Well, that was clearly about me. <laughs> and then, and then she turns to me, and then she says, "What do you think about Tom James?" And I think I said, "I think there's a lot of things to think," or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then she goes. Uh -huh. uh huh. And that was it. And, and then she's you got know, that Karen's it. out. Yeah. And yeah. Karen is oblivious. Completely oblivious. Yeah. Which was really fun to play too. Uh, Tom James comes off the elevator. Yep. He knows Let, everybody. He yeah. knows everything about everybody. Best convention. The best convention. Uh, best one in what a convention. Four years. Best one in four years. <laughs> um, he agrees to be vice president. And then we see some more speeches. That's. We, but we just want to revisit the whole bit of the retelling of him fooling her. I just think that is so fun to do. <laughs> when he, she gets him to repeat it, and he's like, really? It, like, again, that because, is, it makes me really uncomfortable. I know yeah. it's really funny. It makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> well, Gary's behind, too, holding two waters, right? Or yeah. Holding a drink for her and, uh -huh. a, and a water for him the whole time. <laughs> like, just like, emoting. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tony in this episode, too, is when so he, amazing. When yeah. he leans he, into the kiss. kiss. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, he's totally What, do I need to act her. it out? And he's like. Yeah. He's like, he oh, says no, yes. but he's shaking his head yes. yes. Heartbreaking. Oh, my God. Or when I give Gary the floor, Karen gives him the floor at one point. Go ahead, Thank Gary. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I think you've got something, Gary. Yes. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and then he like says the worst idea. Yeah, what if we got... Doyle back and like, oh he announced that he's leaving would anyone like a coffee yeah um, there's a moment where oh it's when Amy's complaining about Karen it's obviously her best friend he's like well her best female friend Gary sniffs a candle like there's something really funny about the way he like well I guess her maybe her best female friend oh and he sniffs God. a candle or something um, I mean that's generally it uh, is there yeah. anything else that you want to Mention oh we do walk backs and double downs like if you want to if you maybe said something that you want feel like you should walk back like a politician would or if you want to double down on something like a politician would oh <laughs> feels like there should be some walkbacks but you um, you run your campaign 
I mean, I would. Why don't you start with one, Tim? Double might, down yeah. on the uh, the pronunciation of mea culpa. <laughs> All right, I like that. How do you say it? Mea culpa. Mea culpa. I would say mea culpa, but it's wrong. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I don't have any double downs or uh, any. Uh, double down on the greatness of whales. <laughs> oh, they are wonderful creatures. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're really smart and sweet. You guys see Avatar: The Way of Water. Yeah, the tin, the 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 tuncoon, the is that the new one? Yeah, though it's the one where they there's a whale in that. Oh, really? Pretty sweet one too. I think I yeah, don't it remember got, it. Yeah, I don't remember. I guess I it mean didn't it's the one that he me. like connects to. Yeah, I guess whatever. The only other thing I'll say <laughs> is that <laughs> I was this is, and this is like a total tangent, but uh -huh. I Please. Uh, I had. I was a new mom at the time when mm -hmm. I got this. I had a one and a half year old. And um, did your kid come out? No, she did. She you brought her to Baltimore because my husband was traveling at the same exact same week. So your first week of Veep work, you were yes. really, ugh, moms have it so hard. So I and it was at that point too where I felt like I probably shouldn't be away from her, or I sure. couldn't like yeah. biologically felt like I couldn't have that distance. Yeah, and I didn't know. I think I knew I was going to be there a week, but it was kind of always like who knows, you know. Veep gives off that vibe. Yes. Yeah. So I was <laughs> oh, like, yeah, we'll have you in and out in 72 hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, and there was, and we landed, it was like a snowstorm and I'm trying to install a car seat in a, in like a car, car you know, like in one of those oh. cars, it was like a crazy thing. My nanny, um, at the came time with came with me. Oh, she wow. had never been on a plane. Um, wow. she was amazing. She was with me until last September. She's like the best in the biz, but, um, that's Alicia. But, uh, I, I just, it was just such a bizarre juxtaposition because I would, I would be with her overnight and then like Alicia would take her to the aquarium during the day and then she would get the night off if I didn't work and I would take her to like the Barnes and Noble that was walking distance from wherever mm -hmm. we were the the mm -hmm. suites that we were staying in and oh, it was, you weren't in the four seasons no because I wanted to have a kit I needed kitchen. to have a kitchen good call. for yeah. good you call. know with Soraya so yeah um but yeah that was it was such a I, when I came back the second time I didn't bring her because I kind of knew what the story was yeah but uh it was it was that's a, and also by that point it was you don't a little like crazy much for that by that other point biologically yeah by the time like, they hit you <laughs> yeah 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 that was but i i have like photos in, of her running around in those big like hotel was we would do like lunch in one of those big like ballrooms yeah and yeah. one of those crazy hotels so she would and come so out she for would lunch come out for lunch so i could see her yeah that's fun really sweet that is fun i have good memories like the kids came out one year for yeah Walt Morgan's like, I'm out. This is not fun. <laughs> yeah. It's too much work, like yeah. having kids and yeah. hotels. and. It is. It's a lot. It's a lot, but it's a lot when you're acting, too. On your first job on Veep, too. Yeah. That's like... Yeah. That, that's that's that, stressful. Yeah. And in a way, like, you do kind of when you're like, I, this is like... I know that I am like this sometimes, like, if it's like a good opportunity or something that I yeah. really enjoy and I'm going to... Like, I want all my focus in those first moments to be on that. Totally. And then, like, eventually I don't mind if the family comes out, like, you know, or visits me yeah. on set or anything. But it's like the yeah. first day or the night before, like, it, you kind of are like, all I want to do is be locked into this thing. Right. So that's tough. Yeah, we did. I didn't have that. You didn't have <laughs> didn't that. Have yeah. that. <laughs> do you think making premium cable comedy <laughs> is more important than having children or do you think having children is more important than or raising children whatever yeah uh, than premium cable comedy good question good question uh <laughs> i mean it's it's premium comedy, <laughs> well right it's her it's a question oh, to her. Okay. no i don't want to affect i'm not asking you, you i know where you're going to come i just thought everybody this. was going to say the same thing at the same time right. no, how about I, at this thing how about we'll do it this way well I'll a say our answer okay. at the same, like karen might at the <laughs> okay, same time sure. ready yeah one two three well premium i both cable. have their <laughs> ups and downs and but also know, premium cable comedy but also premium cable comedy <laughs> yeah i guess i see both sides of it yeah um it's really been great to see you. It feels like it's been a really long time it since does. I've seen you personally, and I just want to say that you're incredibly talented, and thank you for Ditto coming here. Guys. My yeah, pleasure. it's been a real pleasure. Taking and the time. I love you. F the other selfish thing is you fill in memories that I forgot. Oh, yeah. You're telling me about bits. I'm like, oh, yeah, we did do a lot of bits, because I did feel comfortable with you, because some actors come in, I don't know them. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm generous and everything, but it's fun yeah. to have somebody right away you can do stupid things with. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know... 
I only care if you're funny. I, I don't remember your baby. Like, you must have been stressed. <laughs> I'm so like, oh, Lennon, let's do bits. And she's she, like, I have to go. I have to go. Come on, Lennon, one more bit. <laughs> one I got more my bit. baby and the nanny's tired and she's been working for you. Come on, Lennon. <laughs> Premium. I run cable. an acting school in northern New York City. <laughs> Making the acting good. <laughs> Um, oh, I have to say all the things at the end. I got the sec we are uh, second in command uh, of Ypres. Did we have podcast. a question or anything that you wanted to pull up? Oh, no. fuck me. You want to pull one up? Oh, yeah. Let's Pretend like we're good at our job. We're, we're I'll get around I have like to go bit. get my kids. All right. <laughs> like and they're real... still around? <laughs> yes. They're still alive. Yeah, that, that one and a half year old's now 10. Is she at violin right now? No, she's at school. I have to pick her up to take her to jazz dance. Ooh. Oh, you're a You're a dancer, aren't you? <laughs> Did you dance? Not, 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 uh, Officially, <laughs> did you never took theater I'm a dance movement. or what? No, I love to dance, but I'm uh, I never like I feel like one of your formally. characters was a dance instructor, yeah, right? Like, and I've seen solid, you do it. She was a solid gold understudy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of questions. Yeah. There are questions. Yes. They're long. I'll answer all the questions on the. Great. Beep we'll get her out of here. Uh, we are second in command of Ebre Watch podcast. Uh, we are questionably accurate. Uh, uh, show about the television show Veep. I, yeah, I somehow managed to fuck that up. Please uh, listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Do you have anything to plug? Jo oh, when is this going to air? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. No idea? Probably six weeks, eight yeah, weeks from six today. Weeks, okay. Weeks from uh, watch Somebody Somewhere. There's two seasons oh, of it out now. Oh, that's, that's a good, a good show. Um, yeah. I directed two episodes. What? No shit, season. really? Yeah. And you it's are amazing. So good. Oh. Um, and then Mink season two oh, comes yeah. out. It moved networks. It's on stars. Okay. So, you know, get pay two ninety nine for that app or whatever. It's, uh -huh. uh, July twenty first. It comes out season two, and my character gets up to a lot of nasty business. Great. Oh. Did you direct any of those? No. Okay, that's a missed opportunity on their part. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell them that. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Um, that's awesome. That's really exciting. That's yeah. somebody somewhere. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Uh, rate, review, and subscribe, and all those great things. Um, yeah. We'll see you next Peace. time. Peace. Thank Bye. you. Bye.